This is One on One. We're here with Dr. Ali Hushman from Rowan University, um, one of the honorees, one of the epic honorees here at the New Jersey Nurses Association. Doctor, talk to us about Rowan and its commitment to nursing. Well, our commitment to education is profound and is very important and specifically in the area of life sciences and health sciences because of Obamacare, the need for health edu I mean, nurse educators, nurse practitioners, primary care physicians is, is of paramount importance. The, prediction or the, the forecast is by year 2020 the state of New Jersey needs 3,000 additional physicians, 2,000 of which should be primary care physicians. And through the School of Osteopathic Medicine, which was transferred from UMDNJ to Rowan, we are training a large number of them. In fact, we have just gotten permission to increase our class size from 162 to 208 and eventually going to 300. And the purpose being that most of these people that we train, they tend to stay in New Jersey and practice in New Jersey. So what impact do you think that ultimately has long term on healthcare in the state? Well, it has a profound uh, impact because it really costs a massive amount of money for the state to educate uh, doctors and nurses. And when they leave the state, it's to, to our detriment. And the fact that we train them in here and we keep them in here to practice is very, very important. And that's why I think if you look at, for example, other schools, in the schools that provide doctors or train doctors, I think two out of every three that we train in here leave the state at a massive cost to the state because the state subsidizes it. The brain drain. Of course, of course. And for all sorts of reasons. But the primary care physicians are very, very important for the state. And this is really where we are good at because most of the people who go through the osteopathic medical school, they tend to become primary care physicians, about 65% or so. And most of them are staying in the state of New Jersey. And the role of nursing, bigger than ever. Absolutely, absolutely, between the two of them. Because how, there is no way we can respond to additional 20 million people who have registered to, 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 be, to be served by the, by the current... Uh, not enough physicians. Absolutely not. And especially in the state of New Jersey, because the average age of the current practicing physician is amongst the highest in the nation. I think we are, we are the, probably one of the oldest in terms of the average age of the practicing physician. When they retire, how are we going to replace them? That's why the forecast says by year 2020, we are short by 3,000 physicians. So the role of higher education in all this? Huge, huge. That's our responsibility to train the future workforce for the state in the area where the needs are. And that's really what I believe, not only the public institutions and private institutions, we have to always ask or measure the pulse of the state and the country and see who do they need so that we can train them rather than training the people that the state doesn't need or the country doesn't need or the economy doesn't need. So it's very, very important that this connectivity exists between who we produce and who they employ. We're here at the New Jersey Nurses Association. I'm Steve Arbaro. The program has just started. That's why we're uh, talking down a little bit, uh, keeping our voices down. We're here with one of the honorees, the epic honorees, Dr. Ann Prisco, who is president at Felician University, and um, you have a terrific nursing program, don't you? Yes, we do, and we're very proud of it, and if I could uh, brag a moment, we just found out that we, 100% of our students pass their NCLEX, so we have 100% pass rate, which is pretty phenomenal. You used an acronym there. Let's talk about that. That's 100% um, pass rate on the National Council of Licensure Examination. That's a big deal. Why? Yes, well, that exam is the exam that tests the student's ability to function properly in a hospital or care setting. And so for, for all of our students who are taking the exam to pass it is quite an, is quite an honor. And the hard work of the faculty and the students. Um, rates in the 90s, which we typically would get, uh, will always be within the top 10 in the state. So to hit 100% is really quite a, an accomplishment. Nursing has changed dramatically over the years, so nursing schools have had to evolve. Talk about that. Well, certainly we see the credentialization of nursing as the skills that they're required to have are, are higher level skills, more education's needed. So we sent the RN started with a two-year program. Now it's an RN to BSN, which is four years. We have about eight different master's level programs plus two doctorates in nursing now. The future of nursing. A lot of nurses are going into all kinds of professions. There are nurses that are presidents of hospitals or executive level positions. They're leaders at the core, are they not? Absolutely, but they're leaders who also care, right? They care about that one-on-one -on -one and that and that attach and that attachment to the individual. So that's why at the doctoral level, you'll see we have a doctorate in nursing practice for those who want to continue to be in the hospitals or in the care centers, and we also have a doctorate in nursing leadership for those who prefer to go into more of a healthcare administration role. Affordable Care Act has been a game changer. 
It has in terms of the way we're going to have to work together. So one of the new courses we're developing is around into professional education. What does that mean? It means that now a nurse is not going to think of working in a silo with a doctor, with a physical therapist, with an occupational therapist. We really need to have them all working together to care for a patient. Again, we're at the New Jersey Nurses Association. This is uh, the EPIC Awards, and Dr. Ann Prisco from Felicia University, one of the uh, EPIC honorees. Um, let me ask you this, Ann. We've talked about this over the years, but nurses are extraordinary people, and you've interacted with them at the university, and, and um, we all have at the bedside, they're there. What do you think it takes? First of all, it takes brains. They have to be competent. And they have to be compassionate. They have to really care about the person that they're in a one-on-one -on -one situation with. And they need to know how to usually operate within a bureaucracy. So lots of different skills are required to be successful. They're very special people. Thank you, Anne. Yes, thank you. And Steve, so are you. Steve Adubato, we're uh, here uh, down in South Jersey. This is the uh, New Jersey State Nurses Association Epic Awards. And uh, music playing behind us, the awards are about to be given out. And we're here with Dr. Bill Holzemer, who is uh, the dean of the Rutgers School of Nursing. Dean, let's talk about why these awards are so important and why nursing is so important. Well, I think the awards give uh, nursing a, a chance to thank all the many people who support us, who provide financial support, but also uh, just emotional and uh, support. Uh, it's extremely important in nursing because we are pervasive across the whole community. We're everywhere, and it, we affect uh, everyone's lives at some point in their life. Training the nurses of tomorrow changed dramatically? Uh, yes and no. Uh, more advanced practice nurses, uh, clearly. At Rutgers, we admit about 100 a year to our advanced practice program. These are nurse practitioners, nurse midwives, nurse anesth an anesthetists family nurse practitioners, pediatric nurse practitioners. More specialists. Well, they do primary care, though, and they can take care of about 80% of the community's problems, and then we work with our physician colleagues for the other 20% of the care that when they need referral and advanced diagnosis and things. How are patients affected by nurses taking on more and more responsibility and interacting with patients in a different way? The data, the evidence is overwhelming that patients love it. They love the attention, the time, uh, the connection, the human touch, uh, as well as the intellect and the guidance of how to manage the condition, how to work with their loved one who has some condition, they don't know what to do about it. So the data is just overwhelming. Quality is good, cost is good, satisfaction is extremely high. So it's, it's very positive all the way around. And it allows the physicians to do the kind of specialty care they really want to do. Uh, so it's, kind of, it's really a win-win situation. You know, we are seen in many states, but we are based in New Jersey. So the question, Dean, is how does New Jersey rank or rate when it comes to what nurses are able to do and not able to do as it relates to treating patients? At the advanced practice level, we rank in the bottom half of the states in the United States that give advanced practice nurses their full scope of practice because it's still... Translate full scope of practice. Meaning physician supervision, signatory. Now that signature could be a physician who's on vacation in the shore and you're seeing someone in Newark at the federally qualified health center, but uh, and most states have done away with that and it, that signature needed by the physician right it but it takes statewide legal uh, a change in the law we're not there yet we're not there yet do you think new jersey's going to get there i'm hopeful i'm very hopeful i think as care changes more and more the need for primary care has become so great after obamacare and the affordable care act the number of people on insurance and we don't have enough primary care providers and part, not only, but part of the solution will be advanced practice nurses. And ultimately, you think that means what for patients, if this were to happen, the nurses had that authority? It means access to care. It means uh, quality care. 
It means consistent follow-up care. Uh, it, it, it means the things people want from, from primary care. It means they have access, and it's cost-affordable, and it's quality care. Thank you, Dean. Okay, thank you, sir. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Investors Bank, the New Jersey Education Association, Verizon, Qualcare Inc., Johnson & Johnson, ShopRite Supermarkets, and by the New Jersey Office of the Insurance Fraud Prosecutor. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.